I'm Jeff Pospisil, the 10 minute treasurer with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. In this video, I'm going to continue my art of being cheap series where you learn tips on being cheap from a cheap accountant. And I don't think there's any other kind of accountant, but uh, this one is on DIY software. So do it yourself software. And most of the time, at least for an accountant, that means um, using Excel instead of buying some kind of software that that would normally take care of the job. There's a lot of these do-it-yourself types of shows like Ask This Old House, and you can see them on TV or on YouTube or wherever. Um, but really the heart of it is, can you get uh, professional results without having to pay the professional price? And I, I do have quite a bit of experience doing this because I'm cheap and I wanna try to avoid that professional price. Um, so, and a lot of times, just like uh, these shows, uh, you don't pay in dollars, but you usually pay in time. And so that's that's your trade off that you're always going to have to think through. So one of the best examples I have for the potential cost savings between DIY versus paying somebody else to do it is my work with the Dakota's United Methodist Foundation. So one of the more complicated tasks of the foundation is allocating the earnings as well as the fees to all the different accounts that um, they hold. So, uh, th and this one, it can take quite a while if you're trying to do it more or less manually. And also then you're prone to errors as well. So we did get a quote from uh, one organization that would pay, would charge us 35 basis points to do this. So, and this is what the fees would have looked like. So it would have started off around $20,000 per year, right around year 2000 and grown and grown until now it would be over $100,000 per year. So that's that to me sounds like a lot. And again, we probably could have shopped this out, probably could have found a cheaper solution. Um, yeah, but either way, it would have cost quite a bit. So here's what we did pay. Um, and you can barely even see it. So that's how cheap it was. So early on it, from 2000 to 2009, we had a DIY system that was Excel. And um, it would take the person that was running it um, pretty much a full day of going through the numbers and entering them in. And it, it was a very difficult process and it was still prone to some errors. So in 2010, Bruce Bloomer, who was the director at the time, paid me $500 to develop a, a new system. And so I did build one in Access and they ran it for many years with uh, then no cost at all for almost a decade. And then they hired me to run the system later on. And so that now there are some costs, but still very much less. Uh, you know, we're talking about six figures less than what it would have cost if we would have went with this other, other professional. So just to zoom in so you guys could actually see the numbers, I mean, we're talking, it cost us at the most, even in the Excel years, $1,800, you know, would have been the tops. And then uh, even now our portfolio is bigger than ever and we're still not even uh, over $1,000 in cost for us to do this very complicated technical piece. So, and here's just a quick uh, snapshot of that access program. You can see at the title there, it's account manager version three. So they did pay $500 for the original and then they've gotten two upgrades, I guess for free since then. And there's likely gonna be another upgrade. It's not the prettiest program. Uh, it's, it's functional, I can use it. Uh, it would take some training for somebody else to use it, uh, but it's very accurate and it gives us the reports we need. So. Uh, hard to complain about that. So my DIY experience goes back a lot further than that. And this is an experience more of you are gonna be able to relate to because I was the treasurer for a very small nonprofit, uh, North Dakota Family Alliance. And they were especially small at that time because Tom Fryer was just coming in to help reboot that organization. And, um, I, I was faced with the decision, do I renew my QuickBooks or or do I build something on my own? And I just had a hard time justifying that cost and knowing that the, the ministry w was really strapped for cash at that time. And so I made the decision to build my own. And I know a number of you I'm have you. done that as well. So I, I, I had a finance module and a payroll module. They're ODS files because 
guess what? I was and using OpenOffice at the time, so I, I couldn't even justify right wrong, purchasing Microsoft has, Excel uh, and Microsoft Office. So here's the finance module. I had my chart of accounts, uh, so that's all my different accounts, and uh, then I have my ledger, so that's where I, I did double entry accounting. You can see my beginning balances, and then I'd enter in a budget, um, and then I would also enter in your deposits and your payments and, and that kind of thing, but it was all double entry accounting. Um, and then they would all roll into these financial statements. So here's my balance sheet, or actually I call it a statement of financial position. And I would just change those. There's these little numbers up near the top there that I could change. And then also the same with the statement of activities um, or profit and loss is what you might call it. So and this would actually show how we were doing versus the budget and how we were doing year to date. And uh, so, and then I had a payroll module. So this is the part that helped me calculate the withholdings without having to look to the circular E. I don't even know if people use the circular E anymore. But anyway, I didn't have to look at that. And then, you know, it helped me with the, keep track of the paychecks and the W-2s. And then here's what helped me uh, keep track of my withholdings. So that was uh, that was probably my very first financial software do-it-yourself. So I'm really wired to kind of enjoy inventing and creating stuff, and especially on the cheap. Um, so that's why when you go to our website, dakotasumc.org, and go under finance, you're going to see these finance and administrative resources and stewardship resources and legal resources, and you're going to see a number of you know, spreadsheets and templates and those other kinds of DIY things that'll hopefully help you out. So feel free to explore those. I'll put a link to that um, down in the comments. So I recently was contacted by a um, brand new nonprofit and they were interested if I had a spreadsheet to help them track their finances. They, they really didn't want to uh, purchase QuickBooks. They probably could afford it, but uh, they also didn't have the expertise on using it, so that didn't uh, make any sense for them. So I revisited my Family Alliance spreadsheets, well, I and I decided that I would create something for them, and I'm going to make this available for you as well. Um, this, so this would work for very, very small nonprofits and churches. So... Um, this is just the where you would your general ledger where you'd record um, deposits or or uh, expenses. So here I'm just going to put in a deposit of $500, and you can see that balance would be basically your checking account balance. So $1,500, and let's also put in an expense too. Um, we're just going to pay someone. And the categories is basically your account, you know, if you were going to call it that in QuickBooks. So, and that's a drop down. Uh, and uh, you just put in the regular amount, not a negative. I accidentally almost did that. So, I would know that I'd have $750 is my balance. And then when I go to my budget report, I can see what my actual expenses are versus the budget. And I category list is basically your chart of accounts. I call it category for some reason. And then my budget. And I did like I like the idea of splitting it over 12 months and thinking through it, um, being able to adjust it as necessary. So uh, this would be something that would be quick and easy to add on to or and adjust. And uh, we'll see if it's a benefit for people or not. So here's a summary of what I've learned through the years of doing DIY software. First of all, you have to think about who is it for? Who is the software for that you're designing it? So is it for yourself? Because that's a completely different thing than if you're designing it for somebody else. You know, if I design something for myself, I don't care if it's unpolished. Um, I know I'm going to maintain it. Uh, so all that is good. Um, if I design it for somebody else, am I willing to train them on it and get follow-up questions later on and maybe potentially upgrade it? Um, so also, I, a lot of times I feel like I need to clean it up, make it look a little bit more polished. So that's, that's one thing to think about. It's a lot easier to design it for yourself than it is for somebody else. Uh, is it worth the time that, for the money you're gonna be saving? So, and this really depends on, do you enjoy the design work? Do you have an expertise and a skill in that area? 
uh, because if you don't enjoy it and you don't have an expertise in that area, probably it's not worth what you're saving. So um, you might be able to, if you can find something like what I'm providing online for free, uh, that that would be all right. But for me, I, I get entertainment almost out of designing software or designing, yeah. So for me, it's almost always worth the time I'm putting into it. And then the other thing is documentation. Um, and this is the hardest one, but I mean, if you're designing it for yourself, someday you're not gonna be there. And either they're gonna adopt your system or they're gonna be out of luck and doing something else. But if you document it, they'll at least give a, uh, people an understanding about how it's being used currently. So those are my thoughts on that. All right, hopefully this has helped you. Again, there will be a lot of links in the comments to this one. Um, and again, this is a ministry of the Dakotas Conference of the United Methodist Church, as well as the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. And our whole purpose behind this is really to uh, connect with our churches and our ministries in this great mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And whenever you like, subscribe, share, comment, uh, that helps us do our work. So God bless you.